Greetings, fellow Terrans. Professor McKee here with a tutorial for Terra Invicta. We finest professors have hobbies, and one of mine is playing Terra Invicta. I'm creating a collection of tips I've learned while playing this game in case you want to have a study break or fend off an alien invasion. Today's guide is about early game research, which global tax and projects to pursue in order to get your initial space mining started. I have a other early tech one which focuses on the non-space mining ones because there's a lot of space mining and that's kind of worth an entire video. And Terra Invicta is a great game but the tech tree is massive. This is the tech tree with all the projects as well as the global techs. There are a ton of them. And if you don't know what you're doing it's, it can be really hard to know how to prioritize for things. And if you are playing you kind of need to do it if you want to be successful. So, in order to establish mines, you're going to be going for the moon, Luna. Right here. There's nine sites here. Uh, the moon doesn't have much resources, but the moon is also really close, so it's cheap to use boost to pay for it. And then there is Mars, relatively close to Earth with a lot of mining sites and much uh, much richer in terms of resource production. So those are the two main targets that people usually focus on. There are some people that do a Jupiter strap, but I'm not going to talk about that. So in order to get you up to Mars and the Moon, what do we need to do? Well, in order to get even get there, you need to get the Mission to the Moon Global Tech or the Mission to Mars Global Tech. So this allows you to send a probe to scout out all those resource sites and construct habitats on those locations. You can't build on a planetary body unless you have scouted it out. And that means either sending a probe or later in the game you might send a uh, spaceship that has a module that will let you do that. So you need these two global techs. Alright, so for mission to Mars, 2500 space science. You need Skywatch, which is 250 space, space science. You also need Outpost Halves, which is 1000 life science. And then mission to space, which is 250 space science. A lot of global techs, right? I mean, these two are initial ones that are already there, so Skywatch and Mission to Space are already in our global tech chosen. And then once people win, you need them to choose Outpost Habs in order to get Mission to Mars, or in order to get Mission to Mars and Mission to the Moon. Outpost Habs unlocks a project called Outpost Core. You have to do that as well, otherwise you can't build an outpost. <clears throat> now, besides just being able to send a single outpost there, you want to actually be able to mine the, uh, the resource sites. That's the whole point. You're on the moon or more Mars. So in order to do that, you need a few additional global attacks as well. So there is space mining and refining, 2500 space science. It unlocks the outpost mining complex. That's what mines your uh, your resource resources for you. In order to get it, you need outpost halves. You're already going to get that, of course. You also need mass drivers. This is basically they're going to be shooting packets of the re your five resources up here in between Earth and the various places. It's a little science fictiony. Not, not as much, not as hard science as most of Terran Victor, but uh, it's necessary to make the game fun. Because managing the logistics of individual packets of water and volatiles and metals would be, uh, be a very different game. And then also, in order to do mass drivers, you need advanced electromagnetism. That's available right away, but you have, someone would have to pick it in the global tech tree. That's a thousand energy science, and then another thousand energy science. But there's more, because if you're on Mars, you're farther away from the Sun. 
so solar panels don't work as well. Solar panels are feasible for the moon. They will not work very well as your source of power on your um, habitat uh, mining out outpost there. So you need to use nuclear energy. Nuclear fission in space. This will unlock what you need for the power, which fission piles. This is a nuclear power plant on Mars. 2500 space science there. And then you, in order to do that, you need deep space propulsion concepts, a thousand space science. So two more techs. And this is, these are only ones you need for Mars. And deep space propulsion is unlocked by the mission to space that you're already going to be doing, because that's the initial, one of the three initial techs. Okay, so now I'm going to go into the tree because the projects also cost research. They're very cheap though, so they're, it's not that bad. Uh, let me pull them up. So the outpost core that you need to just claim that spot allows you to found the outpost. That's just 300 space science. Real easy to do. Uh, you just need to unlock it. <laughs> the outpost mining complex. That's what the, uh, is unlocked. You need to have done Outpost Core first before this will show up. And you also need to have done the this way up here, Space Mining and Refining. This costs 500 Space Science. A little bit more, but still quite cheap. And you don't need to bother doing this until you're actually going to build a mine. So if you want to claim your spot and then you wait until you have enough boost, you can, you can delay research a little bit here. That's kind of a more advanced technique. I'm not going to talk too much about that. And then for the last one, the fission pile, that is energy, science, 500. This allows you to build that nuclear power plant for your, for your mine. So most of this is global tech in total. It's 14,300 and almost all of it is the global tech. So it sounds like a lot and it is. The other factions will be contributing here, and hopefully they pick good techs, uh, good, good um, global techs that will help you get get to that point. And you might have noticed almost all of these are space science, so space science is a really useful research type to have bonuses in early on. Uh, do keep in mind, oops, go back up here. So if you are researching multiple. I don't. I don't have. A, I don't have a bonus because I just created this new game. But if you have researching two at, of the same type, your percentage bonus is going to be diluted. So you ideally will only be doing one or maybe two at most of the space sciences at the same time because if you're stretching your space science research team out too too thin, they're going to be not as effective. Now, that's just the bare minimum. If you're going to send stuff to Mars or to the Moon, but especially Mars, you need lots of boost. And there are some early attacks that can help you get that boost you need to uh, beat the AI factions to the best resource sites. Advanced chemical rocketry. So this is just better, better rockets. It costs a thousand material science. It's available. It's a global tech that's available right away, and it, un it unlocks a whole bunch of useful projects. I'm going to pull up right now. So reusable rockets. This one has a low chance of actually unlocking, and then you have to hope that commercial rocket companies, which is what you actually want, unlocks. Uh, so you get 20% improvement on investing in boost. So you're investing in more boost, big bonus there. And then the commercial rocket companies, another thousand science, but it creates a new org that will it'll have it'll have boost income. So it's a it's a way to get boost income if your countries are not going to do it for you or if you want your countries to invest in it. Now, it's not reliable because it's only 50% chance to unlock. 
Next is Super Hemi Chemical Rockets. This one, again, low chance to unlock, and it gives you a 10% increase. It's also really cheap to only 500 space science. And you get the, you can produce the Diana, the, the, the Diana rocket for building a ship. These early engines, drives, are terrible. Don't use them. <laughs> you don't want to use this. It's going to be incredibly expensive on volatiles and water, and it's not going to do much for you. The reason you would do this is to get the 10% boost priority, if, again, if you're investing in boost. Space Tugs gives you faster speed. So when you actually pr send the probe to Mars, you pick out your sights, and you use boost to lift a half module into orbit and send it on a trip to Mars, it's going to be 11% faster. So there's a time value advantage here because the faster you get things sent to Mars, the faster you're going to start producing water volatiles, metals, etc. And the faster you're producing these things, the faster you can continue to expand because you don't want to use boost to keep building up um, your resources. You want to build things in space because lifting things out of Earth's gravity well is very expensive. And then the last one is probably the most important here of these projects, high thrust probes. So your probe that you send to Mars is going to be twice as fast. Uh, if it unlocks, this is a great tech to pick up because this pretty much guarantees you're going to beat the AI. Uh, they generally don't prioritize it that much and they might not even have it. I'm not going to necessarily react immediately and definitely pause the game, immediately send the probe once mission to Mars completes. Now, many of these are not guaranteed to unlock, but this is still good to pick up anyways, just because you're going to have inter... Oh, that's a more advanced one. It's a good one to pick up if you're hoping to produce extra boost, and just if you get high thrust, high thrust probes, it's going to be really helpful in making sure you get the best sites. Now, there's one additional pickup to that which is the interplanetary chemical rockets. It requires cryogenic fuel space rockets. That's a older liquid, uh, liquid fuel rocket that you already have. This costs only 100 science, base science. You get boost income. You get a new Nova liquid rocket, which again, not gonna be a very good uh, ship, ship, ship drive. But it reduces the boost used for sending things outside low Earth orbit. So if you're sending stuff to the moon or sending stuff to Mars, the amount of boost you pay is, is reduced. Very nice. Um, and these, these three techs that everyone just always has, they all have decreased cost in sending things up into orbit. So this is just a, sec uh, a fourth one that makes it a little bit better for you. And this alone, that boost cost reduction is great and it's so cheap. It's a thousand, and then that global tech is, is, is or, this is one hundred, and then the global tech is one thousand. So for one thousand one hundred, you get a big reduction in in boost expense. Okay, now the last one is nuclear freighters. Now this is a great project. It's just expensive. So. The delivery of modules is increased by 18%, so it's even faster. This is going to be in addition to the space tugs. And it greatly reduces boost use cost if you're sending it beyond Earth orbit. So there's an ex exhaust velocity of 10 kps, so you're basically the, the freighters have more powerful engines. The tech you can research for 100 science, uh, let me find it again. It's up here. Yeah. Interplanetary chemical rockets. It pushed you up to 5.6. So, if you get this, interplanetary, uh, the nuclear freighters will reduce your boost cost by almost half. Even 
and that's after you include this, right? It's 5.6 versus 10, so you're almost almost doubling your your engine uh, oomph when you get the nuclear freighters. Uh, the problem is it doesn't always unlock. You only have a 60% chance that it will happen, so not terrible. And you have to get solid core fissions, which is 5,000 energy science, global tech, and then 2,000 energy science for the project. And you have to get nuclear fission in space. Um, so if you can, if you can control the research projects and get to nuclear fission quickly, and then get to solid fission cores quickly, and get those nuclear freighters up before you're sending your first modules up into um, up, up out to Mars, this is a good one to pick up. Uh, you know, sometimes the AI will have will, will dominate the global techs, especially if you're not super experienced and not controlling it, and they might end up you know, not going down this route fast enough, and they, they pick up mission to Mars before you've even done nuclear fit in the space. There's just no way you're going to be able to get through solid fission core and down to nuclear freighters before you get to the module. You still might have a chance, because it's going to take a while for the probe to arrive, and you're going to be sending several modules out there, so the nuclear freighters still might happen. And it saves you so much boost, you probably want to try for it if you can. Solid fission core is not a useless tech by any means. You want to get it for the early drives you want to use when you actually start building these ships. Alright, so that is all the early space techs that you're going to need in terms of building up your mining. Those are the global techs you'll want to focus on. Those are the global techs you'll be cheering when you see the AI pick, and you'll be despondent when the AI doesn't pick it. <laughs> so you now know which to, what techs to pursue, both projects and global techs. If you found this video helpful for your study break, please comment, like, and or subscribe so that others can find this video too. Happy not studying or dealing with the alien invasion.